Welcome to Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. I am Adrian Scott. Uh, been a little bit since I've had a video up, and I just wanted to kind of uh, post an update. First off, if I do sound a little congested, uh, I've just been getting over a bit of a sinus cold, so pardon me. If it doesn't sound like that at all, then just ignore everything I've just said, and uh, we'll just pretend that everything's great. So, yeah, a little bit of a sinus cold laid me out for a little bit, but uh, getting back into the swing of things, and it's been a little while since I've, I've done this, particularly driving around, but I figured well, I got some time before I actually get home, so here's a great opportunity to just say hi, check in with everyone. A few things to update you on. Um, the first is, uh, well, I got some pretty remarkable news that I'm extremely excited about. In October, it sounds like I will be making my very first trip to Israel. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. In some ways, it's actually something I'd say that I wanted to do even before I was a believer, just because I've always found that part of the world so fascinating. It's uh, everywhere you turn is just more archaeological discoveries, and archaeology is one of the little things that. I have kind of found interesting. I really know nothing about it, but I, I find it very interesting anyways. So even before being a believer, it's just a fascinating part of the world for that. I remember hearing a, a saying one time, which I thought was really funny, because it's true that uh, the, uh, what, how do they put out the um, a bulldozer, the archaeologist's best friend, because it seems like every time they break ground there to, to construct a new building or a house or something, as soon as they break ground, they find more archaeological finds and it shuts down and team of archaeologists come in and start digging it up and researching it. Anyways, that's going to be a huge one in October. I will be taking multiple cameras and an obscene amount of pictures and videos. I can assure you now, you'll be seeing a lot of those in upcoming videos. Um, another one is we'll have a bit of a trip happening in the beginning of July where we'll be getting together with Ray Gaucher, Trucker Ray, and uh, really looking forward to that. We are planning on taking some tripods and cameras. We'll be out camping in the woods and just setting up and doing a few videos with us and, and talking about whatever we talk about. It'll have something to do with God. Um, so that's coming up and we're pretty excited about that too. Now, I had been doing a, a number of videos on uh, Hebrew stuff, which is obviously a, very much a topic of interest for me. I did mention that another area of something, of something I was quite interested in was creation and evolution. Again, keeping in mind that for a good chunk of my life until, like I said, I think I was about 36 or so, 35, 36 when I became a believer that prior to that, I was a pretty staunch evolutionist. And really, I, I had a mindset of, well, the Bible can't be true because science has proven that it isn't. And uh, really, what is the Bible? It, it's a book of superstitions for small-minded people that need a crutch to get through their lives. I, I say that kind of disdainfully now, but it is what I believed at that point, something very close to that. So, obviously, a pretty dramatic shift in, in my mind view, if, uh, or world view, if I think quite differently of, of the scriptures now. But that is it. And so I'm going to do a few videos really touching on that subject, and it's going to get mixed in with the Hebrew stuff, but as very much kind of a cursory introduction to that, I wanted to take a moment and just, well, first off, mention that, you know, for the first yay many years of my life, I was an evolutionist. But what was it that made me change, or at least start to question things? And there is one idea that I think I need to kind of plant the seed of before I can even talk about that. And that is the idea of world views. What kind of lens are you seeing the world through? And ultimately, I do believe there's only two. There's a biblical worldview, and there's man's worldview. And 
in man's worldview is obviously where you get stuff like your Big Bang Theory and billions of years and millions of years and evolution and all these other things. These are all topics that I'd be quite interested to touch on at one time or another, and I will. But as that introduction, is that idea that there's, I think, only two basic worldviews, a biblical worldview and man's worldview. I used to have hold to man's worldview, and now I hold to a biblical worldview. But one thing that came up, and uh, I'll mention, it was a, um, a fellow by the name of Kent Hovind, um, and I watched his seminar series. This was at a time when I was kind of being introduced to Christianity in general, but I'm like, is this something I want to do? Is Could there be something to this? Because I really was pretty firmly in my worldview on that one, which was billions of years, evolution, all, all that stuff. And uh, he posed one interesting question. There, there was a lot of things that he said, and they all kind of captivated me. It was kind of funny because as I'm watching through this seminar series, he would make a point about something that was procreation, anti-evolution. And I'd be sitting there going, yeah, but... And then the very next point would be a rebuttal to my butt. And I wasn't even directly talking to him. But it's like he was hitting on one one point after another. Everything I had, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And then he would answer it. But the one that got it all started was he made a comment about an article that appeared in an episode, or uh, episode, in an uh, issue of National Geographic. And the author was talking about uh, dinosaurs. And this is a, a big topic for Ken Hovind, is dinosaurs. But the author stated, no human, something very close to this, no human being has ever seen a living dinosaur. That was his opening statement, or again, very close to that in this article. And uh, Dr. Hovind asked a simple question. Does the author know this, or does he think this? That was earth-shattering for me. Because, as he pointed out, and I said, really, let's put aside for a moment whether or not this guy's right. Maybe he's right, maybe he's not. But put that a moment for aside to just look at the question, right? Does he know this or does he think this? And to know this, what would be the case? Well, he'd have to have interviewed every human being that's ever lived to see, did you see a living dinosaur? Well, that's completely impossible. He can't do that. So therefore, by that simple conclusion, he thinks that no human being has ever seen a living dinosaur. Yet look at how he's stating it in the article. He is stating it as a cold, hard fact. There's no room for debate. There's no room for conversation. No human being has ever seen a living dinosaur, period. End of conversation. If he'd have phrased it any one of different ways, we believe that. The evidence would seem to show that. Anything like that. But just to state it as such a cold, hard fact. And it started getting me thinking. Because I said, well, clearly he can't know that. Because he would have had to have interviewed every human being that ever lived. So he thinks it. Yet look at how he's stating it. So then I started thinking, okay. What other things have I been taught and told that are such concrete facts that maybe aren't such concrete facts. And that's, uh, <laughs> that opened the big old can of worms for me. Um, getting all the way down to stuff like radiocarbon dating, dating methods in general, um, just not being as infallible and certain as they would pass it off to be. Big Bang Theory, it's only ever been a theory. I mean, no one was around other than God, if you you know, go with the, the creation worldview, which I do, but uh, nobody would have been around at that point except God. So we can't know that for sure. We can make guesses. We can make suppositions based on evidence that we see, but we don't know for sure. So then the question becomes, well, could there be other explanations? And what I find so interesting about that stuff is when you look at the Big Bang Theory in particular, the more you look at it, 
the more they have to compound one theory on top of another theory on top of another theory on top of another theory to keep it going, to give it any kind of legs, to give it any kind of credibility. Whereas uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You don't need any rescuing devices there. Is it really such a far fetch to believe that that could be a possibility, but you're so ready to believe that nothing exploded and became everything? I mean, that's that's the Big Bang, the way I see it. You know, so which one requires a bigger leap of faith, really? So that's kind of the first thing that got me going, was that idea of... It wasn't even proving for a fact that any of this stuff was true. It was more that idea of what I thought was such a certainty is not such a certainty. And you can start finding all these holes in all of these different elements of evolution and the Big Bang Theory in billions of years. There's just holes all over the place. I mean, you can, <laughs> all over the place. And... Uh, so that was the big shift for me, and I started asking those questions, and I started looking at it, and I, st I wasn't quite ready to just jump on board with believing creation was true. I mean, come on. It's a pretty big jump to go from believing that the Earth is, what, 13 billion years old, or no, four, four point something billion years old, or whatever it was, to being only 6,000 years old, which would be a straight up biblical interpretation. There's debate about that as well. It doesn't help when you even have people within a biblical community that are arguing. Are they literal days? Are they thousands of years? The gap theory, the day-age theory, all these different things that come into it. Just a simple, literal reading of it would seem to indicate, and if you line up the genealogies of Adam through all the different biblical figures, it's, it seems to say that it's about 6,000 years old, roundabout. That's a big shift. So I didn't want to just jump on and believe that. So it was asking those questions and, and looking at those things. And I listened to both sides. I listened to evolutionists explaining that side. And then I started listening to creationists explaining their side. And in the end, the creationists made more sense, needed less rescuing devices and less theories to prove their point or to make their point anyway. Unlike the evolutionists, which when you look at it, it turned into a big old mess and they just, like I said, needed one theory on top of another theory on top of another one to keep it going. Um, I want to pick apart some of those topics like the Oort cloud and things like that that I, I really find so intriguing. But that's really kind of the introduction. So that's what I'm going to have coming up. Um, a couple of updates on things that will be happening. And... Uh, yeah, I'm still working on settings on the new camera. So it slows me down. It slows down how quickly I'm producing stuff when I'm playing around with a lot more settings. And I'm still trying to figure out some software. I think I found a few formats um, that allow me to do slides and visuals. But I'm learning how to use those. All of that just is reducing the volume of stuff that I'm putting out. So I'm working on it. It will get better. Frankly, I'm retiring in about four and a half years. And once I retire from my job, uh, I'm going to go more pretty much full time into the video stuff. Maybe not even with this channel, but just some of my own personal stuff. Um, but until then, I mean, this is what I'm working with. So I just I thank you for everyone that supports the channel. I do encourage you to like, share, and subscribe. Um, between the three of us, we're going to have some interesting stuff coming out. We are having some conversations behind the scenes, so there's there's some real um, topics of interest that I think we're going to be touching on. All things to look forward to. And I look forward to bringing you the next video. So until then, blessings to you in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. And uh, stay safe out there. And just keep believing and keep your eyes and attention fixed on that Bible. Turn those pages, read them all, beginning to end. I can't say it enough. In Yeshua's name, blessings to you. Shalom.